So, thank you everyone for joining to my session as well as uh, our committee day. So, I believe you guys are not uh, sleepy or tired at this moment. Typically, <laughs> uh, any software engineer, so after lunch, yeah, you feel a little bit of, uh, you know, sleepiness. So, I hope uh, my session, uh, I'll try to uh, keep you awake okay, in my session. So let's uh, get it started. So, so today in this session, I'll be talking about automating the deployment of software agents centrally using AWS Systems Manager. Uh, can I ask from you guys, how many of you have uh, used System Manager? Can I raise some hands, please? Okay, thank you very much. And I believe most of you guys have uh, uh, had to deal with uh, software agents. Uh, so. Uh, because when you come to security, when you come uh, when it comes to compliance, there are various agent-based uh, tools that you have to deploy. Uh, especially, so in in this topic, I will be talking about uh, to to easy to instances how we can uh, deploy to multi-account AWS environment. So, so before I uh, talk about the topic, uh, so I'll just introduce myself. I'm Chatra Sera Singh, and I'm a senior engineer person, and I'm an AWS ambassador, and AWS community builder, and also I'm volunteering uh, AWS user group Singapore, and also I have a few certifications in cloud and DevOps, around 10 plus, like uh, AWS, Kubernetes, Azure, uh, those stuff, and on top of that, I'm a, a musician as well. All right, okay. Can I plug it? Okay. Oh, awesome. thank you. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. So on top of that, I'm a musician as well, which is, uh, uh, and you can find me in YouTube. So I have been uh, contributing uh, to Sri Lankan films as well, as well as a singer, as well as a, a music director as well. So I, I believe that's enough uh, about myself. So. Let's uh, talk, uh, let's uh, see what we are going to cover in this session. So, uh, so I will first uh, try to introduce what is a software agent, if you guys, uh, because I've, uh, for the benefit of all the audience, so I, I believe uh, it's better to understand clearly what is a software agent, and then uh, what are the agent deployment use cases that we find. So, and also, uh, so I'll be doing a demo, uh, a demo video actually, uh, because uh, uh, due to network constraints, so it, it's hard to do a live demo. So, uh, so I'll be talking about that, and uh, sorry about that. Uh, and uh, so I will show what are the AWS services that I'm going to use in this my uh, in my demo architecture, and I'll be uh, show you how how my architecture works, and then. The, finally, the demo video, and uh, we can, if if time allows, uh, I I would try to uh, uh, give you some time to for questions. Otherwise, yeah, we have to uh, because we have a quite uh, tight schedule. So, yeah. So, what is a software agent? So, software agent is a self-contained software program. So, I think you guys know. Uh, uh, Typically, you find installers like MSI uh, that is for Windows, and you you know uh, RPM you can install in uh, like uh, Red Hat or Amazon Linux, and uh, Dev packages you can install in Ubuntu. So these are typically we uh, you can package your agents uh, uh, into one of these. So so that's what I try to mention here, and then. Uh, so what the software agent typically it's act, acting as a, like it's it's doing there's some goal to achieve and also it act, acting as a representative. Uh, 
think about this. Like, I, I believe, if I try to simplify even more, uh, I, I think you guys have worked with uh, real estate agents, right? So, uh, and you have a seller and a buyer. So, uh, this, uh, in this scenario also, like, uh, uh, the real estate agent tries to uh, get the information from some, one party and give it back to another party. So, there should be some communication uh, between those two parties to happen uh, to make the deal, right? So, uh, I mean, software agent, it's, it's also doing something similar. And uh, so, it's br it uh, like creates a communication channel between two parties. Uh, so, typically, uh, this will talk, uh, the, so you install a software agent in an EC2 instance, and then it will, uh, the agent will help to communicate with a, a SaaS solution probably. So yeah, so that's how the software agent is. I hope that is clear about software agent. So agent deployment use cases. Uh, so as I said earlier, uh, uh, I, I, would, uh, I mean, you would see a lot of tools uh, in security and compliance. Those are agent based. And uh, these are used, I mean, you, you guys probably using uh, that for uh, endpoint security and uh, some threat, threat intelligence, and also software asset management, uh, especially uh, license management and inventory. So to, uh, for those, uh, these are some few use cases, there are many more, but I try to highlight some important use cases in this uh, scenario, which, is, which I see in most of the, even if, because I'm a consultant as well, so uh, we see a lot of customers, they, they have this business problem. So that's why I, I was trying to uh, bring this topic here, which is not too technical topic, but I think it's around like level, uh, level 200 topic. But I, I believe but it is really important uh, because you, you cannot avoid EC2s. Uh, even though we talk about serverless, even though we talk about containers, we still have to manage and we, we, have, we still have to maintain the compliance and security for those instances. So I believe uh, this topic is still valid. And then uh, the so I will talk about here, uh, what are the AWS services that I'm going to use in my architecture. So, so, so as you saw in my uh, topic, the first one is the system manager. So system manager is kind of a very uh, big service, I would say. It, it has a lot of capabilities and, but like if I try to simplify what it really does is it tries it helps you to manage the EC2s. Not even that it, it can uh, manage the on-premise uh, instances as well. If you can install your SSM agent, so I will talk about that later. But uh, then uh, also uh, like some tasks that you can do is applying OS patches, configuring the uh, instances. These uh, things are possible. And the good thing of uh, system manager is it's a you know it's a free service. Uh, probably some of like s small exceptions, but it's really you don't need to you don't uh, uh, need to spend too much to use these services. But I think, uh, uh, in my opinion, I I still believe system manage is one of the underrated service when compared to other services. I don't know whether you guys agree with that, but uh, uh, with its capabilities, there are a lot of things that we really can do to ensure the security and compliance. But I'm, I'm not sure like everyone is properly using that. Uh, so then, uh, so in order to use system, mana uh, system manager, so there are a few prerequisites that we need to, uh, you know, we need to make sure that certain things to happen. So first thing is uh, you need to install the SSM agent in EC2 instances. Uh, so, but, uh, uh, it, it's actually like this. So most of the AMIs currently, uh, they, uh, they have the SSH agent installed. But some cases, uh, there are certain uh, uh, cases you might have to uh, install the SSH agent manually or you can include that in a user data script uh, in the user da data when you launch in the instance. So from uh, in either way, so you will pro most probably, e you can easily get this SSH agent in, in EC2 instances. And the next thing is uh, access control. So, uh, so the, in order to work, so you need to, uh, uh, your EC2 instances, uh, 
need uh, some permissions. Uh, uh, you need to make sure that uh, so some appropriate permissions, especially if, uh, pro you, most probably you might, you might have to uh, uh, include this policy in your instance profile. Uh, otherwise, it cannot call uh, SSM uh, en endpoint. Uh, uh, so that is one thing. And also, if you are using system manager or your IAM user or whatever, uh, the, your user uh, need to have some privileges to use. Otherwise, uh, you cannot use system manager service. So other than that, uh, the instance, uh, uh, so uh, since, it's, uh, since I talked about uh, easy to instances, they are, uh, in order to talk, uh, communicate to the uh, system manager endpoints, you need to uh, open the uh, 443 uh, port outbound traffic. Uh, so that will ensure uh, the connectivity between the EC2 to system manager endpoint. But that is if you have the internet access. But if you don't have the internet access, there's additional thing that you have to do that is to create some VC VPC endpoints. So. Uh, there are f uh, around four VPC endpoints, if I remember well, like EC2, uh, uh, SSM, SSM message, EC2 message. So those uh, VPC endpoints you need to create to privately uh, communicate from EC2 to uh, uh, system manager endpoints. So, so these are some of the features, like popular features, I would say, uh, you can find in a system manager fee. Uh, I mean, system manager service. So. Run command is one of the simplest tool, I would say. Uh, you can find that, uh, I mean, it helps you to run shell script and uh, PowerShell or whatever scripts in your EC2 instances. And uh, the uh, automation is, uh, I would say, it's like a big brother of uh, 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 run command. It, it has more capabilities. Uh, uh, I will talk more about automation later because I, I'll be using that in my architecture. Uh, so uh, it's kind of, it, ha it has more capabilities like calling AWS uh, APIs and uh, multi-region, multi-account. So you can centrally uh, run uh, automation. Uh, uh, th this feature helps you to run uh, centrally uh, to multiple accounts and multiple regions. And then the patch manager, actually that, that is as the name implies, it's, it's, uh, uh, it's uh, useful f when you want to patch your uh, OS, uh, OS, uh, uh, or your OSS, Windows, or Linux, and then the state manage also that I'm going to use. Uh, so, uh, as the name implies, that that we, we, it actually tries to maintain your state. Uh, it try to ensure the state. So, if, if you know about Kubernetes, Kubernetes also they are uh, you know when you define uh, uh, when you define the YAML file, you you actually you are defined the state what it really should happen, right? So in state manager also, it works something similar. So you define the state, and state manager will take care of the, the state. So it will make sure, uh, let's say, the, if the agent need to be installed, so it will make sure that is always there. So, and the maintenance windows also, it's, uh, I would say it's, uh, uh, it's not the same as say, state manager, but it's, uh, there are some similarities uh, in uh, state manager as well. So, and parameter store is uh, to store your parameters and you can refer back, uh, so, and you can uh, store those parameters securely as well. And the distributor is the one that I'm going to uh, use to store the package and also to distribute the package to multiple accounts. Then I will talk uh, in detail. Uh, so there are many more, there are uh, uh, many more, but I don't want to talk too much about those. So. System manage op uh, automation. So it, uh, as uh, uh, I mean, what it, uh, it it can run the playbooks at a scale. So at a scale means, as I said, uh, uh, across uh, the multiple regions, across uh, multiple accounts, you can do that. And uh, API actions, creating cloud formation templates. Uh, so, so, sorry, cloud formation stacks, and also uh, uh, you can run Python scripts. Uh, PowerShell scripts uh, and also uh, like service catalog self-service actions. It actually is a very very powerful tool. I'm, I'm not going to talk too much on that, but uh, you you must remember this service, uh, so this feature. Uh, I will. I think definitely it will help you a lot. And then the state manager. So uh, so here 
uh, you have uh, uh, you can associate SSM documents. Uh, it can be like uh, uh, predefined document. There are predefined do documents already there existing in AWS. So you can use that either. Uh, yeah, uh, either you can uh, create your own uh, SSM documents and. Uh, so once you define the SSM association, and in the SSM association, you can uh, define your targets, and uh, you can run whatever the command, these doc documents on those instances. And how you, uh, how you re can run the association? So there are four ways you can do. So first way is, uh, uh, so uh, by default, if you create a SSM association, it will automatically run once when it provisions, and then it, that's it. But there, if there's any configuration changes happen, it will automatically run again. So that's how the default behavior is. And then uh, if you want to uh, run a like, cron job, uh, uh, like uh, as a cron schedule, so uh, for example, if you want to uh, stop a, a RDS instance or whatever, if you want to run in a schedule, you can use cron, or even you, you can define uh, to run in uh, run hourly or daily, or even uh, if you go to the console, you can uh, uh, on demand you can run the SSM association, to, so it, it will automatically apply those uh, to the target target instances. So state managers. So so these are the target types that uh, it it has. So first ways you can target on a node ID. So that means instance ID. And or else you can, you can target on a tag, and uh, so if you have a proper tagging strategy, and if you if you want to uh, target on a certain instances only uh, which have the certain tag, so you can target on that. And also uh, resource group, and uh, and also if you want to run to all the AWS uh, instance, uh, all the EC2 instances, you still we can do that as well. And so as I mentioned earlier, so. Uh, th this is about, uh, oh, so uh, imagine like if you create uh, new EC2 instances, after you create the SSM association, if you create a new EC2 instance, instance with a tag, so uh, state manager is intelligent enough to uh, identify that new instance and apply the changes what it uh, required to do. So uh, you don't need to give any, any other information. Just uh, you, uh, just you need to tag the instance. It will do its job. So, right. And the next feature is the distributor. As I said, this this uh, helps you to securely store your uh, agent package. Uh, uh, so don't worry too much on this. I, I will have a demo as well. So I will you you will uh, uh, see uh, that in a. You know, you can get a better insights on that. So once you see the demo, so uh, he, uh, as I mentioned here, so you can uh, uh, use to store the your agent package or drivers or whatever. If it's if it's packageable in uh, you know, uh, it's definitely. I mean, you can use the uh, system manager distributor, and and it, it it has the ability to share across uh, uh, all AWS accounts. You can set the permissions. In the distributor package, so you can set, uh, give them what are the accounts. Uh, it can be auto automatically done, or you can uh, man uh, manually give that. So, likewise, you can share that. And yeah, there are uh, packages. Uh, I mean, AWS defined packages as well as I mean, AWS have given some pa uh, software packages as well as we can create our own one. So, in my demo, I will create a, our, my own one, uh, and. Uh, then the version control. So let's say you want to update uh, the software package, so 6.5 to 6.6. .6, so uh, that will be a new package, right? So you can use the same uh, definition, but you can upgrade the version. So likewise, the version controlling also possible with this uh, uh, system manager distributor, and also uh, the c controlling the access to packages using IAM. So which is, uh, I mean, IAM is <laughs> one of the uh, uh, important service if you want to control the access. So this is how the uh, typical uh, distributor package looks like. Uh, so you need, uh, I mean, there are two ways to do that. So first way is uh, if you uh, use the com uh, AWS Management Console, 
you can uh, you just need to uh, give the you just need to upload the MSI or RPM and DEP, DEP packages then it will automatically generate the manifest file and the installation scripts so that's a one way of doing it but if you are if you are following like infrastructure as a code and if you want to uh, code uh, I mean if you are not using the console then you need to prepare these zip files uh, so zip file includes the this uh, software file and as well as the all the scripts uh, and then you have to pre uh, prepare the manifest.json file so then you can uh, 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 put that into s3 bucket as, as shown here so so then this is how the manifest json should look like so you have the files uh, defined here and you have to mention the checksum so but uh, if you are using uh, console you do not have to worry about too much it will automatically generate it so right then uh, I mean so once you create the distributor what are the options that we have to install uh, the package so these are the two options first one is the run command so you can run it uh, I mean uh, you can install using run command the other recommended approach what AWS also recommends is uh, state manager association so uh, I, I, I have already told about what are the benefits of it why so the, the re because of that even the AWS uh, recommends to use uh, state manager association so then uh, control tower so in my architecture, I will be using uh, customization for control tab. I will show that later. So, I mean, if you if you are dealing with multiple uh, AWS accounts, uh, I think you you guys uh, already know about control tab and what what is the benefit of it. And especially if you don't know about control tab and landing zone, I just give you a very a brief introduction. Like uh, landing zone is uh, it's a pre-configured multi-account uh, environment. Uh, based on best practice blueprints. That means like AWS ha helps to uh, uh, set some uh, uh, best practices on your landing zone. So Control Tower uh, helps to automate uh, this thing, the creation of the landing zone. So that's what it really does and it's more secure and uh, uh, scalable so uh, because you have an account factory and you you, uh, you can create the account uh, from once you set up your uh, uh, control tower so using that you can do that so uh, yeah and so this is the uh, control uh, customization for control tower that I, but I wanted to share so here uh, later I will I, what I'll do is uh, my uh, cloud formation templates will be uploaded to code commit and it will go here uh, it will trigger the pipeline and it will uh, deploy the stack sets to the uh, managed uh, uh, sorry uh, the member accounts so that's what it what we it, it really does so uh, in my case there are two cloud formation templates I will show that in the demo so these are, uh, I mean, this is uh, how we triggers based on the control tower li life cycle event, which is not relevant to the my topic. Uh, uh, what I'm trying to show you here. So demo architecture. So this is how uh, uh, I mean how how I uh, deployed uh, the software uh, uh, agents uh, to uh, uh, multi account environment. So you have the management account. So you have the control tower and I have deployed the control tower customization this part and then uh, I have prepared the manifest file and uh, there you have the SSM association definitions and also the agent distribution uh, definitions so it will go uh, it will once you commit the code it will go and uh, deploy the stack sets uh, to so SSM association goes to all the member accounts and uh, the agent distribution uh, uh, stack will go to the shared services account so I have used the shared services account because the because this uh, this is a, a security agent that uh, I, I wanted to de uh, deploy and I want to share it across uh, the uh, from one place to uh, uh, multi, uh, I mean the member account so uh, this is I mean typically you 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 might have heard uh, if you have a control tower environment it's not by default it's not creating the shared services account but 
typically in organizations we we may maintain a shared services account for such purposes so uh, here uh, uh, so this is the SSM distributor package that I'm creating so it's a another SSM document and uh, here what I'm trying to do is uh, imagine now if you have control tower and if you have uh, multiple accounts so uh, there could be new accounts creating uh, gradually, right? So it's not a one, uh, it's not just uh, static, like, so let's say if the, there's a new department or if, if you need a new environment, uh, so they, they, people ask for new accounts, right? So we have to make sure that, especially the security agents, it, uh, those are deployed to all the accounts. It covers all the uh, AWS accounts. So uh, what it really does is it, uh, the event rule, uh, this will trigger, trigger daily and uh, the automation document helps to uh, share this uh, so it will calculate I mean it will evaluate what are the list of the accounts in or, or the whole control tower environment and it will update the permissions of SSM document so uh, there's a Python script I have uh, included in the SSM uh, automation uh, script and then so so that that ensures that uh, you know uh, uh, so it makes sure that it shared to all the accounts then once it's shared it, it uh, so it can be seen from the so members account can see this uh, uh, package uh, so so then the SSM association uh, has a, con a command document uh, uh, in it so it, it will do the uh, pre-installation and uh, like uh, installation and the post installation so there are some scripts there so then it will deploy the uh, agent to the uh, EC2 instances so I think yeah so this is the demo that I will I'm going to show you, so let me play that. It's around five to six minutes. In this demo, I'll be presenting how to deploy Snow Agent to multi-account AWS environment. If you haven't heard about Snow, Snow is an IT management platform used by the software asset management teams to better manage and optimize infrastructure spend and governance across on-prem as well as clouds like AWS. This includes software agent which require to be deployed on each endpoint. That means, in this case, all AWS instances in order to pass information from instances to integration server. To deploy any agent through this method, first of all, you need to prepare your zip files and the manifest.json file in order to create the system manager distributor package. As you can see, there are three files, including MSI file, installation, and uninstallation scripts. These three files are required to be placed in a zip file in order to package your software in System Manager Distributor. Likewise, I have prepared zip files for Linux as well. If you are manually creating these files, you have to include one-liner commands correctly in your installation scripts. If you are using Management Console, you have the option to auto-generate installation scripts and manifest.json file when you upload your MSI or RPM files. Since we are trying to deploy these through code, you need to manually prepare these files. Once you have prepared these files, these need to be placed in an S3 bucket. So I have uploaded these to one of the S3 bucket in share services account as I told earlier. After you have done this, the rest of the resources will be deployed through customization for control tower pipeline using CloudFormation templates. Let's have a look. In Snow Package Distribution YAML, I have defined the SSM distributor package definition which is also a SSM document but its document type is package. Also, I have mentioned the source URL and the path to manifest.json file. Then let's move on to the next part of the code. This package sharing solution comprised of three resources. First one is SSM automation execution role. Second one is SSM automation document. Then the last one is event page rule. So these resources help to share the Snow package across all AWS accounts. Also it ensures that the package is shared with any new AWS account whenever it's provisioned. 
I have deployed all of these resources to shared services account through customization for control tower pipeline. After that, the state manager association will be deployed to all organizational units which covers all the AWS accounts where you expect to have your instances. In this template, I have defined a system manager command document with pre-installation, installation and post-installation scripts for both Windows and Linux instances. Then the state manager association which is specified below uses this command document. Also, you can see that I have defined the target based on the instance tag value. So if any instance has this tag, the state manager will execute the system command document on those instances and install the snow agent. I have already committed this code to customization for control tower pipeline and deployed through stack sets. If I go to dev account, then go to system manager distributor. If I click the share with me, I can find the snow package shared through shared services account. Then if I go to the state manager, I can select snow agent installation association and check execution history. I can see the last execution, the resource status having success equals one, which means it has successfully ran the commands in one instance and there's no failures. If I had 100 instances, I would see success equals 100 under the resource status. If it failed, it will show the failures as well. If you want to get more details, you can click execution ID. Then you can see all instances and its command outputs. So if you click the output, you can see the logs of each step which can be useful when you want to troubleshoot it. Here I can see the package has been successfully installed in the instance. Finally, let's go to the EC2 instance and see if the snow agent is running. If you list all processes, you can see it's running on this instance. the end of the uh, demo so so finally I would like to give the key takeaways uh, of this session so uh, this is one of the way that we uh, can deploy uh, agents to multiple AWS accounts but uh, not necessarily uh, the only way of doing it so I believe you guys agree with that so one of the ways of uh, other ways of doing it is it could be uh, uh, including the agent in uh, golden AMI but in this method, uh, the advantage of this method is you are not coupling that to the uh, AMI pipeline. So, uh, for example, if you want, because you might have various kind of agents, so and it it have a lot of updates, right? So let's say for if you include all of those agents in your AMI pipeline, which could be very uh, you know uh, very complicated, and and uh, people prefer to uh, have the agents. Uh, you know, uh, sorry, the AMI uh, to be simple as possible. Uh, so that that's 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 the reason if you have want to deploy a custom agent. So uh, this is one of the important way. But uh, quickly, I'll tell you the except. Uh, there are uh, another thing is the exception handling. So, uh, so for certain instances, sometimes you have you have to avoid certain in uh, inst some instances like virtual appliances or. There could be many reasons. So, for if you have that uh, problems in your organization, you probably use. Uh, I mean, you should have a proper tracking strategy. Otherwise, uh, so then you can target on those uh, instances, and you can avoid the uh, uh, other instances that we, which you don't like to install the agent. And uh, the last point, what I'm going to talk about is. Uh, uh, you should be able to uh, uh, install the. I mean, you should 
your instances should support the SSM agent. So there are some incompatibility issues and uh, especially like Red Hat 5, the older versions, sometimes you cannot install the SSM agent. And also some uh, company uh, security policies also, uh, some, some companies they don't like to have the SSM agent in their instances. So these are some uh, things that you need to uh, think of uh, if you are using this uh, architecture to deploy your agents. So that's it. Uh, so thank you for listening to my session. And I don't think we have enough time, uh, isn't it? So, so feel free to reach out to me if you have any questions. I'm happy to discuss if you have a different thought, if you have a, uh, you know, if you want to clarify anything, feel free to reach out to me. And I'll be here the whole day. So uh, until that, so see you guys.